Good morning. How wonderful to hear the chatter of brothers and sisters in Christ fellowshipping with one another. Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church. We're so glad to have you here with us today as we lift up our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A couple of announcements. You will notice that you have an insert in your bulletin about our Easter program, The Power of the Cross. That is not for you to keep. It's for you to give away to someone this week, maybe to your waitress at lunch today, to your doctor at your visit this week, uh, maybe just to some uh, random person on the street or your neighbor. Please uh, pass that along. The information for you is also listed inside the bulletin, so don't keep it to yourself. Um, the information is there. We have completed our transitional study, our congregational study, leading us up to begin our search for a pastor. Isn't that wonderful? And next Sunday morning, our transition team will be giving a final report, and we will also have a very special commissioning service for our pastor search committee. And so you will not want to miss next Sunday's worship. It is also Palm Sunday, the Sunday before Easter, and so we hope that you will be with us. Uh, please read through the Pastor Search Committee covenant that they have adopted. That is what they will be going over next week as part of their commitment to you and to me as a church. So um, uh, at this time, <clears throat> I would like for you to just consider who Christ is to you and how he is with you at all times. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, help me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on. To the light, take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are humble to have the opportunity to gather in your house and worship this morning. As we turn our thoughts to the old rugged cross, let us take a moment to remember our loved ones who have gone before us. Our husbands, our wives, our fathers, our mothers, our sisters, our brothers, our sons, and our daughters. We thank you that you gave your son to be crucified on that old rugged cross so that we could have eternal life. We want to remember those in nursing homes and those that are homebound and those that are facing serious illness. We pray that you will comfort them and give them strength as they carry on their life. We pray for this church that everything that's done will be in your will of power. Go with us through the remainder of this service. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 54, followed by number 53, which is the page right before it. Great is thy faithfulness within his time. Would you stand as we sing together?
Our scripture today is found in the 130th Psalm. It is a song of ascents. It is a song of lament. We sing about the faithfulness of God, but this does not begin with that. It begins in the depths. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. This is God's word for our hearing today. May God bless the reading of this word, and may God bless our ears as we hear this word. Amen. Thank you. 
For our prayer this morning, let me make a couple of announcements of people that uh, need our prayers. Francis Curtis has spent some time in the hospital uh, and is now home, and for that we're grateful. Uh, James Barnett's son, some of you know Donnie Barnett, passed away earlier this week. His funeral will be tomorrow in Catlettsburg. Uh, his body is at the Kilgore Collier Funeral Home. Visitation is at 11 o'clock in the morning, uh, and the funeral is to follow at 1 p.m. May we pray? God, we gather before you today. We, first of all, confess our past mistakes and trust you with our future. We confess, O oh Lord, that there are times we despair, yet we find courage because we realize you do not keep a record of our failings. We trust your mercy and your forgiveness today. We pray that you would be with the Barnett family during their time of grief, be with others who have been ill, continue to strengthen them. O oh God, we confess that our journey through life has many twists and turns and sometimes dead ends and pitfalls. We confess we have stumbled and fallen. We turn again to you. Thank you for picking us up. Thank you for dusting us off and sending us along our way. We confess, Lord, that even though we've sometimes hit rock bottom in our living and in our faith journey, our reliance on you helps us to keep from despairing that all is lost in our lives. You offer us forgiveness even as we express our regrets. Help us to grow in our faith and our knowledge of you. And so, Lord, we bring our lives again to you today and seek to follow you. I pray all these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 426. You probably don't even need your hymnal, but it's 426 if you need it. Would you stand and sing heartily this wonderful hymn of faith, Victory in Jesus.
Thank you, dear Lord, for us being in your house today, and we truly have the victory in Christ. Be with these tithes and these offerings and help them benefit your church here on earth. Be with us and guide us in everything we do and say. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
it's just hard not to respond to something like that. He has been faithful. And the psalm we read this morning ends by saying, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. But the psalm does not begin there. The psalm begins out of the depths. I cry to you, O Lord. I understand that musicians through the years have created some major works from this psalm. I understand that no fewer than 36 major works have been inspired by this psalm by composers such as Mozart and Handel and Mendelssohn and Schoenberg and Johann Sebastian Bach. Is that how you say it? Bach. It's a little above my raisins, but anyway, anyway, the psalm has inspired beautiful music. And as usual, Maria has done a wonderful job of selecting music for our service that relates to the scripture and to the, the sermon of the day. And earlier I was in here and Jean was in the back practicing. Precious Lord, take my hand. Lead me on. Help me stand. And, and, and she did a beautiful job and she said, I'm kind of weaky this morning. And I thought she said weepy. And I thought, well, if you're singing that song, you would be kind of weepy. But she was weak, and, and God takes us in our weepiness and our weakness, and we cry to the Lord as this psalmist did, and the Lord hears our cry. Precious Lord, take my hand. This, this is a psalm of lament, 120th through the 134th psalm are psalms of lament. We don't do much lament in worship. We like to start on a high note and keep it there. But the psalmist and the worship guide for Israel reminded us that sometimes our worship is a lament. It is a lament to God. This is also known as a pen penitential psalm because it is a psalm in which uh, the, the singer, the psalmist, is penitent before God. This is also, as I've already indicated, a psalm of ascent. It, it, it was a psalm that was probably used in worship as they ascended to the temple and as they worshiped God on pilgrimage. And so, it is a song of ascent in a metaphorical sense as well. It begins in the depths of anguish, and it rises to the heights of assurance. It begins in the depths. The singer cries out from the depths. The metaphorical nature of this term allows us to create a great deal of emotion while at the same time we can add our content to it as it will. The psalmist gives us permission to be unafraid, to wail out from the deepest places of grief and anger and fear and frustration. Sometimes we scream out at life and sometimes we cry out at God. There is a human truth embedded in the voice of this psalm. And the truth is there is a place in us that, that speaks in an indescribable and unutterable tongue, a sighing, a groaning, a language that does not have words. I've heard the wailing of people at the death of a loved one. 
many, many years ago as I was beginning in ministry, serving as a chaplain in a hospital. I sat with an African-American family at the death of a child. Words did not come to me. Words could not come to them. But over and over, just simply, mm, 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 as they cried out to God, just crying out from the depths, we have heard from King David as he laments the death of his own son, Absalom. He weeps. He wails. His crying out can be heard through the ages as he said, Oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom. He wishes a substitutionary moment. Oh, that he could have died instead. A cry for some divine intervention that would preserve the life of his now lifeless boy. Oh, my son Absalom. What parent of us? is not stunned at hearing this story. What person among us does not cover our ears with such sound of agony? Out of the depths, David laments the death of his beloved son. Such grief seems too difficult to bear. As a minister, sometimes I have had the Awesome responsibility. The deep, mysterious honor of attending death. At such times, words fail us. Language stutters. Death threatens our capacity to express, to intone our lament, our supplication for the ear, the presence of God. From this place, we stand with the singer of this psalm and cry out from the depths. We wail, we lament, we complain, we weep, we hope. God, are you there? God, are you listening? I'm coming to you from the depths. But in one sense of the word, it is the most holy place for conversation with God. The movement from the depths moves not just from the depths, but cries out to God. It is a crying out not just simply from the depths, but crying out, lamenting to God. Not, not so much grumbling to God, but an expression of profound faith. A faith that God is present, God hears, God is able, God is willing. And from this vantage point, God does listen and God is present. Lament is a form of speech that allows the worshiper to complain about injustice and to call on God to hear the cries of those who suffer even to hear our cries as we are sad about our sinfulness. After identifying the location out of the depths, the psalmist pleads, Lord, hear my voice. The psalmist believes in the presence of God in the depths. You ever been in the pit? You ever been in the depths? God has been there with you. The third movement is the, is the psalm pointing to the nature of God. God is one who hears. Not just our beautiful praise, but our lament. God does not keep a watcher's eye to our sinfulness. God does not worry about what we have done. God is a forgiving God. While some of the despair must have come 
from external trials and difficulties, the great despair of the awareness of this singer of this psalm is his own sinfulness. And so as the singer falls before God, he does so as an unworthy sinner. Before a righteous and holy God. Who of us? Who of us? or without sin. There is no self-righteousness in this psalm. The psalmist knows that if dealt with according to his works, he could not stand before God. If you, Lord, kept a record, who could stand, he says. If, If the Lord kept in memory and and put a black mark By us, each time we sin, my, 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 what could we do? Sometimes we falter and stumble and we stumble over our own selves and we are our own worst enemy. A Baptist preacher was attending one of the great cathedral worship services in London. He was visiting St. Paul. St. Paul is one of the most beautiful cathedrals in the world. I've not visited, but I've been to Westminster, a, a, a work of, uh, of Wren. It, it's a beautiful sanctuary, a great dome. And on this particular worship service, on this particular Sunday, this Baptist preacher was down toward the front, and there were so many people there that they had to have metal chairs set up. And he said, as this very formal worship service began, a woman came in to sit, and as she sat, she stumbled and stumbled over one of those metal chairs, and and it just was a cascade of chairs, stumbling and falling and ricocheting and making the noise there in that beautiful cathedral, in that formal worship service. He said, if that was not enough, the priest, as he approached the altar, there was a, there was a rope that, that hung, and it hung low, and either he didn't see it or he tripped over it and, and pulled it loose and fell and stumbled over his own feet. There in that wonderful, beautiful, formal worship service, he stumbled. Well, perhaps a trite illustration but perhaps how true of our lives. We, 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 it sometimes seems that our lives become a comedy of errors. Are, are you with me? Or am I talking over your head? Uh, sometimes our lives are a comedy of errors, and sometimes we're our own worst enemy. And when we are, we can, as the psalmist, say, out of the depths I cry, for you. If you, O oh Lord, should mark iniquities, if you mark my stumbling, who could stand? But, but there is forgiveness with you. The fourth movement is that of waiting. The first human thing to do when we're in the depths, is to cry out. That's natural. The second thing we need to do is not so natural, and that is to wait. I was reminded this morning as I was chatting with Dave Thomas. Thank you, Dave. Uh, (coughs) Joy comes in the morning, he said. But the morning comes at 12.01, and it's still dark. you got to wait for the sun to come up. We wait upon the Lord. Verse 5 and 6 says, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in His word I hope. 1201, I start hoping. My soul waits for the Lord, again it says, more than those who watch for the morning, and it repeats the very same phrase, more than those who watch for the morning. It is, a, it is an anticipation. It is not a passive waiting of just sitting and waiting. But it's a realization that the sun 
is going to come up in the morning. The psalm ends with hope, not just for the singer, but for all of Israel, for all the congregation. Hope because God is one who redeems. God is one who has steadfast love. God is one who forgives. Sometimes we feel as trapped as Annie felt in the orphanage when she sang, when I'm stuck with a day, I'm not going to sing it, but I'll quote it. Is that okay? Yeah. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick up my chin and grin and say, oh, the sun will come out tomorrow. You've got to hang on till tomorrow, come what may. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I love you tomorrow. You're always a day away. When I'm stuck with a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick up my chin and grin and say, the sun will come out tomorrow. Oh, yes. The sun will come out tomorrow. Not so much because we have a positive attitude and stick out our chin, but because God is a God of steadfast love, one who forgives us and one who redeems us. The fact is, we can cry out to God, and it is when we cry out to God that God is present with us. The sun will come out in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. But you've got to wait for the sun to actually come up. But it always does. Because Christ loves us and died for us and gives us hope. May we pray. Thank you, God, for giving us hope. Thank you that we can cry to you out of, the, out of the depths of our heart and heartache and that you will indeed take our hand and lead us on and help us stand. I pray these things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we end this morning where we began, where Gene started us. With hymn number 456, Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Would you allow Christ to take your hand this morning? And would you respond by reaching out and taking his hand as we stand and as we sing?
May we pray. It is in gratitude, O Lord, that we come to you today thanking you that when we cry to you in the depths of the night, you bring sunshine to our lives. Take our hands. Lead us from the night to the day is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. 